Hello there and welcome to Curve Theatre and here we are today with Sean O'Connor, the director of The Entertainer and Shane Ritchie who is playing Archie Rice. Good morning. Good morning. So my name is Phil Lowe from East Midlands Theatre. Hello Phil Lowe from East Midlands Theatre. Thank you very much. And uh, today we're, we're looking at this new production of The Entertainer which is, taken, is taking itself from the 1950s through to the early 1980s and we'll discuss that in a little bit. So the play is written by John Osborne, originally known as a State of the Nation play uh, about a dysfunctional family, about bitter disappointments in life. Um, about Britain being at war and the fact that it splits families rather like Brexit does nowadays splits families opinions and and creates some um, real problems there um, so we have various characters we have Archie Rice who you're playing yes, and then we have the dad Billy and we have Phoebe who's your disappointed second wife, uh, second wife um, was hoping for more in in life uh, and um, income I guess as well, and your character also likes to not pay income taxes. That still that's right. He's on the verge of celebrating his, his uh, 21 years of not of not, and paying he's kind of uh, wants to celebrate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excellent. So the original one was about the Suez. There's, there's several threads in this play. The original one was about the Suez crisis, uh, which which comes into sort of anti-war feeling. The the daughter Jean goes to Trafalgar Square and she protesting about this. We've also got a son Michael who's gone off to fight in the Suez crisis, mm -hmm. um, and um, you've got a, a son Frank, who who in the original um, was against conscription and he got him put in jail for it. But when we see him in the play, he's acting as Archie's feed in his musical act. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, so we've got this now set in the 1980s. Can you tell me a little bit more about why you chose to do that, Sean? Uh, I love the play and I think it's a genuine classic. It's one of the great um, dramas of the 20th century and it's got one of the great parts in it and I've seen several productions and love them um, but I've always thought that there's a barrier between the audience quite getting it and that you have to work quite hard at it and that there are two um, hurdles I think and one of them is that you sort of need now an A-level in history to understand the Suez crisis and part of the issue with that is that when Osborne was writing it in 1957 the Suez crisis was very present, it was in the newspapers, it was on the radio or the wireless, they probably call it then. And ultimately, the audience watching it, consuming the play, would know all about it. And it's not written really into the play. It doesn't feel very present in the play. So it's hard to access. And then also there's the issue of Music Hall, which even in 1957 was on its way out. And in about three or four years' time, the theatres that um, Osborne had researched with Olivier in the original production were, had all closed. So there are two barriers to getting it. Um, and I wondered, is there a way of releasing this play from its, from its history um, so that it could feel as urgent and accessible as the original production did? Okay. And I thought quite carefully about where you could set it and should it be, I mean, it's interesting, in America they did a TV version with Jack Lemmon and they set it further back in the past, they set it in the, in the Second World War and I don't know if you know this, but Billy and Archie were a duo, um, uh, like a sort of an American um, comedy duo. Huh. Um, and I talked to the Osborne estate and they said it's very interesting, in the UK the, the, the play is always set in 1956, but in Europe it's set in the present day, it's set during Afghanistan, it's set during the Iran crisis, and they are much more free with how they interpret it. And in many occasions it's played as a much more expressionist play, and Archie's much more like the MC from Cabaret. So with a white face and it's much more snarling, and it's much nastier, more, um, more sexually in your face, cruder, if you like. And I said, well, what about if we did something like that? And they were very excited about it. Um, and there's also an issue, you know, that, you know, that right now we're in the middle of a crisis about Britain's place in the world. That happened in 1956. It also happened in 1982 with the Falklands crisis. So you've got that parallel. And you've got an issue about cultural change, which is that in the early 80s, um, uh, when alternative comedy came along, they outlawed the mother-in-law joke and those sexist, racist jokes that you'd regularly see on, on, on prime time Saturday evening television like um, Seaside Special or on, on ITV on the comedians. I remember those in my own life. And so it seemed like there's 
an interesting cultural shift there about comedy and and essentially a man realizing that a certain sort of culture is is passing and in the same way that there there is what haunts this production is is brexit without ever talking about it there's also the issue of me too and about whether arch is not just uh, a comedian who's old-fashioned but a certain sort of man and that certain sort of opinions about women or different races or sexualities have become upmoded um, and I think that in many ways you could say that the, 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 the biggest ghost that haunts this production is Me Too. Okay. Does that answer your question? It very does good. answer my question very good. That's excellent. You've done that before, haven't you? I haven't actually. <laughs> no, I'm doing stuff for the first time. Very good. Wow, yeah. fantastic. Thank you very much. You are mentioning about European theatre. I'd often go and see a lot of German theatre oh, where your description about the, the white face and the snarly and the bit more aggression coming through, um, that, that's often a, a thing that you would, they would build into their experimental oh, theatre. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I think, yeah. interestingly, what, it's very... In the same way that, for instance, Sarah Kane is really popular in Europe and not so popular in Britain because she's... That, it's called in-your-face theatre, isn't it? Mm. I think that the entertainer um, is when it's done in Europe is much more um, it's much more enjoyed by people that like Brechtian productions which are not non-naturalistic they're not kitchen sink they're much more theatrical they're much more in your face um, and that they're a much more visceral experience when you see them and I think that uh, that's that's where we're going really uh, um, rather than a sort of traditional kitchen sink version of the play okay thank you very much Shane Tell me about Archie. Oh, Archie. Um, our version of Archie is very different. Uh, I suppose the one that people will, will recognise was the, the famous Lawrence Olivier version. As Sean said, ours is set in 1982. <clears throat> and for me, I grew up, my, where I grew up in London, my dad used to run working men's clubs. And so as a child, I would see comics every weekend that, that worked the, the, the club circuit around the UK. That were, you know, I come from a big Irish family as well. So I'd see a lot of these comics who were like racist, sexist, homophobic. And I remember sitting watching them uh, as a youngster and, 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 and laughing. And not really know why I was laughing then, but then, you know, when I... Uh, went into the business as a comic in 1980, 1981. I worked with Archie Rice. I worked with a lot of these comics. I, I saw them when I worked at the Holiday Camps or when I toured uh, theatres in the mid-80s. And I did shows like Life of the Palladium, Life of the Piccadilly, Seaside Special, Summertime Special. And then I ended up working on the club circuit up and down the UK. So, and, and I remember comedy changing in the early 80s, um, when I was well, my, uh, in the early days of me doing stand-up and seeing the likes of the comedy store players, French and Saunders, uh, Alexis Sale, Ben Elton, and a lot of these comics coming through and doing something very different. Um, and so I know who Archie Rice is. Um, I know where his head's at. I know the material he does, which... It, 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 it didn't seem so offensive back then, but I mean, if you think, it wasn't that long ago, the, the, in, in the early 80s, the black and white minstrel show was still on TV. And you know, that's only like 35, 40 years ago. No, but when you do look back at them, now oh, you're uh, like, you just oh. think, how did we even let that through on television and be, how, how did anyone even find it entertaining? But the likes of your Mannings, um, I mean, I'm loath sometimes to mention Jim Davidson, but, you know, Jim was part of that whole club culture where it was homophobic, racist, sex, and, and certainly Roy Chubby Brown, um, who's still touring now. But, and it, strangely enough, it still sells out. It's, it's so bizarre. But anyway, but so my Archie Rice is, like, you know, he's set in, 80, in 1982, he's in his mid-50s, he's a guy that's fallen from grace, you know, in his 30s, it would have been in the 60s, he was part of that whole, you know, the Beatles had just come through, comedy was new, musical was dead, summer seasons were starting, the club circuit was still in its infancy. 
uh, Bruce Forsyth was Tarbuck, all these comics, Ted Rogers was uh, coming through. And that's what Archie was part of that uh, movement. And they were homophobic, they were sexist, they were racist, they was the, the, high, the mother-in-law jokes. I mean, even Les Dawson, you look at Les Dawson, I was looking at something on YouTube the other day in the 80s on the Raw Variety Show, uh, was the king of the mother-in-law gags. Um, something you certainly wouldn't get away with nowadays. Um, so in the in the text that mm. I read, there's um, there's quite a lot of references to things that, to names of things we that would, would have been called um, in the 1950s, like boogie woogie. He mentions about the boogie woogie clubs, which is marginally racist in its own description. Mm. But then you've got much more harsher terms like wog um, for the Egyptians, so the coloured people um, that were connected with the Suez Canal crisis in there. Um, how, what are you doing, if anything, I don't know if it still works, um, in the, given what you just said, in the script, in terms of addressing those, those terms? Well, we Obviously, you can't make it all no. nice. No, but, but we talk uh, about the polls, don't we? Yeah, I mean, in, in terms of transposing the material, I mean, in the same way that you have to, you have to change the, the, the imperial system to the metric system, and so a cake costs more in 1982 than it did in 1957. Um, there are certain terms which I think the audience now are hypersensitive to, and therefore what you don't want to what you want to do is is to is to express the the, the offensiveness of it without offending the audience that are consuming it. So you want to make the, you want to make make, make it clear without it being offensive in itself, and that's quite a delicate balance. Mm. But so, for instance, um, the, we haven't got the word wog in it, um, uh, but we are retaining uh, the offence, if you like, um, because we, we want it to be clear that he's a sexist, racist, homophobic man, and that what he does is represents a culture. And as James just said, um, in some areas uh, in, today, still, I mean, I, I went to a I went to a drag bar in. Grand Canaria, oh. and where there is a drag dwarf, it's called Sparkles. Okay. And what's interesting is it's that it's full of uh, middle-aged straight couples enjoying it, and the, the the drag performers are really homophobic. They're really racist, and they're really misogynist. And it's almost like the the audience who are your uh, your uh, uh, Sharabang trippers to Grand Canaria have the license on holiday to really enjoy themselves, and I think you know what's interesting about comedy is it, it is it is political in itself because comedy is the comedy that we talk about and the entertainer that that Archie represents is usually the comedy of offence. It's about uh, it's the comedy of difference and offence. Um, it's about targets, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and and, and 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 people enjoy laughing at somebody else's difference, mm. and the, the the cultural change in terms of uh, uh, alternative comedy is about not taking advantage of that, um, and but so what we're doing is we're having to dramatise that moment of change, which means you need to embrace the offence in some way, but it has to be palatable for a contemporary audience, which I think is hypersensitive to. Um, uh, insensitivity mm. uh, and tough to do. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's a, a really, really fine tough. line um, because you don't you don't want to geld it to such an extent that it's completely it, it doesn't make its point, but you want it to be clear that comedy has changed that this is the moment that it changes. Okay, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Just to uh, to finish on, um, tell me you've got a, a nice cast, Sarah Crow in the cast and. Um, Others? Amazing. Um, yeah. so just tell me a little bit how that's all working. Um, well, uh, Good family to work with. Brilliantly. I mean, that, uh, I had, uh, Sarah, as you probably know, she's an, an extraordinary comedian. She's um, an Olivier Award winning actress um, and just was, uh, as soon as I asked her if she'd be interested, she just jumped at the chance to work with Shane to work on this play. Um, Diana Vickers, I had seen in The Rise of a Little Voice in the West End. Um, and I, she's a very ballsy, committed young feminist, and Jean in the play is a ballsy, committed mm, young yeah. feminist. Um, and in this, it's interesting in this version, um, Osborne wrote in the 80s when he was thinking about the play in, in hindsight, he said, if I'd been writing it now, I'd, I'd have 
she'd have been a Queen of Common. And so we're benefiting from the movement of the play that all the characters have a more identifiable, accessible image. Um, and in the 50s, Jean was a sort of slightly CND, slightly mumsy character. But now I think she's recognised me the sort of person that would be camping out at Waterloo Bridge the other week, mm. that she has found her political voice. Very good. Well, thanks very much, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. OK. Thank enjoy you your run. Cheers, and buddy. I would look forward to seeing it on, on press night. Brilliant. Thanks, thanks for your time. Nice Thank to see you. you. All right. And you. Bye-bye.